Hello everyone, it's Bibi Cameron here. Welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to be sharing three simple card ideas using products from the Tonic Craft Kit number 12. I received my kit last week and I guess those who pre-ordered the kit are receiving theirs this week. So this is a good time to share some creativity. And if you haven't got this kit, of course these ideas are also for you and it's a good opportunity for me to show you the kit. So here I have the Tonic Studios Craft Kit number 12 and this kit includes this maple leaf checker refill which is great to make super quick checker cards and this measures 4 inches and 1 8 by 4 inches 1 8. You will also get these foil cards and you can see here how beautiful that foil is. They also comes with toppers and envelopes. And the envelopes are beautiful. They have a different color inside. So I wanted to show you this. You will also get a Midas Touch Aqua Shimmer Pen, Rose Gold Sequins, Vintage Nouveau Drops, Embossing Powder, Nouveau Drops, and seven different paper designs like glitter paper, texture paper, embossed paper, pearlescent paper. So there is all these papers here for you to enjoy. And you also will get a die set with 39 dies. This is huge. You will get also this stamp set that coordinates with some of the dies. It includes seven individual stamps. Uh, and you can see here how uh, they coordinate with some of the dies from that huge, massive die set. So the larger die in the set measures five inches and a half by five inches and a half. And I wanted to measure all the dies, but then I decided that I wanted to organize them first on a magnetic chain. So when I was doing that, and I took it took so long because there are so many dies, and I was writing down how many dies I get in different sizes, etc. I completely forgot. However, I wrote down the size of the nesting dies here, some of the nesting dies, and the larger die measures five inches and a half by five inches and a half, and the smaller die measures four inches and eight by four inches one eight. So I'm going to put this die set there, and when I get a new die set, I like to cut a piece of paper to see how the die cuts looks and I found this die set very clever because depending how you use the dies you get different different shapes so in this case you will get three different die cuts using a uh, two dies so you get a kind of frame you get the background and you also get the inner die cut so with this you can mix them and match them in many different ways and you can achieve different results so let me explain you a little bit better. If you use these two dies, you will get these two die cuts. If you use only that die there, you will get this kind of die cut. And if you use the frame, you will get a whole leaf. I just wanted to show you this so that you can have a better idea about how the dies works and how the different shapes looks when you use the dies. Now I'm going to use this kind of dies from the set. It's the ones that coordinates with the frame die and it has the, the inner die with a stitched border all around the shape. And I really think that these die cuts are beautiful. So one of the ideas I had was to cut a bunch of these die cuts and glue them on a piece of cardstock to create a false embossing effect. I did that with another uh, card in my blog and people really like it because it's a very simple idea and you can use the intricate die cuts or the solid die cuts to create that effect. So I'm going to show you that a little bit better but first I have to make a card to be able to show you that. So I have the idea to make a, a gate for card and to do that I'm going to use one A4 sheet of paper. I have two A4 sheet of papers here because I was thinking in making two different designs but you only need one. So the next step is to cut the paper in half and I'm going to get a C6 card base and to make the gatefold card I need two of these card bases and they will fit in a C6 envelope. 
So you don't need to be worried about the envelope for your cards. Okay, so now I'm going to grab one of these card bases. I'm going to fold this part here in half. And I'm going to do the same with this one here. Once I have this done, I can glue that part of the card together like so. So that I have my gate for card. You have to make sure that the folds are completely aligned. So now I want to do some partial die cutting. And I'm going to place my die like that. I'm not gluing the card yet, but you can do it if you want to. Uh, but I think this, this way is easier. So I'm going to place uh, the cardstock on the cutting plate and I'm going to align this other cutting plate with that cutting line in the center. I'm going to run this through the machine. So I'm just going to cut the half of the leaf like so. So you can see here how this is going to look. And actually when I was doing this and I was uh, checking how the paper looks, look at that. This really look nice. And you can easily just place a piece of paper behind this and you can create a front panel for a card just by doing that. So you can put behind any kind of paper and you can stamp a message, kind of stamp a secret message or do something fun. But I don't want to go away from my idea. And all I have to do here is to cut the paper in these corners. So I just get rid of this piece of paper here and this card panel is done. Now I'm going to do exactly the same with the other side. And to do that, I just need to place my die like so. And I need to hold it in place using masking tape. This is a low tack tape. So when I run this to the machine, it's not going to peel the castor when I remove the die. And here you have to excuse me because my die cutting plate is horrible. It's all staining, has glued, embossing paste, embossing powder, everything. <laughs> So what I'm going to do here is just to show you how I die cut uh, this. And this is the way I place the top die cutting plate. So I just put uh, that plate on top of the area I want the die cut to cut the paper. So that I just get this shape like so. And then I trim any excess of paper there. And uh, this is the basic card base. I'm going to stick this together now. And I'm going to be using double sided tape. And I'm making sure that all the sides of this uh, card base are aligned. If there is something extra, I just cut it and that's it. So you can create these cards in many different colors and you can also get coordinating envelopes. So that will add a completely different look and feel to this project. You will see that it fits in an envelope with no problem. You can even add a topper or a band around this card and it will still fit in that envelope. So from here you can also embellish in many different ways. And I have this idea to create a kind of false embossing look using these die cuts here. But of course you can also use the other ones. As I really love everything that have stitches, I'm going to use these ones. And I'm going to glue them using funky glue. What I like about this glue is that if I glue down any die cut in the wrong position or the wrong place, I can just easily move it around and while the glue is still wet, you can easily clean it with your fingertips. So I'm not overthinking here, I'm just gluing the die cuts here and there and I'm having glue all over my hands, <laughs> you can see there. Uh, but this um, is very simple and once I have everything down, I just trim the excess of cardstock all around the edges and that's, that's it. I think that you can stop here, okay? But I know the Tonic family likes uh, layering more elements on the cards. So I'm going to be honest, and I spent maybe one or two hours trying to find the right elements for this card. I tried different paper colors, different size of die cuts, and I even tried to see how a checker might look has a topper, I die cut this golden frame, and then I also try to place the different parts in a way, in another, and well, it was just like, um, I wasn't making any progress really. <laughs> but I wanted to show you these images because you can get some ideas from that as well. So at the end, I just grabbed this uh, embossing 
folder by Tim Holtz and I embossed this leaf and I have to tell you that I really love the look and feel of that leaf and I say I therefore have to use this one and I like Cooper very much so I also die cut a maple leaf out of that Cooper paper and this is the die I use. It's going to cut a leaf like this one and it's going to create this stitched pattern in the other or the negative space of the die cut. So I'm going to stick the leaf that has been embossed with that beautiful embossing folder by Tim Holtz. I'm going to link the embossing folder in the description of this video just in case you are interested in buying that embossing folder because it's beautiful. And all I have to do here is to stick uh, this uh, topper just in one side of the card. So I'm going to glue this piece like so. I'm going to allow that to dry and all I have to do here is to add the sentiment. I just hit emboss the sentiment with the Cooper embossing powder that comes in the kit. I die cut it using the coordinating die and I also hit emboss this little squirrel here and I that cut a bunch of little leaves out of that Cooper paper as well. And I use this Craft Perfect Dimensional Foam Pads, the tiny ones they sell, to add all those little die cuts on the front of the panel. They are really, really tiny, but they do the work. So this is the card. I hope you like it. And don't go stay there because I still have two card samples to share with you. But before, I want to share with you an idea to use inexpensive photo paper together with Nuvo Aquaflow pens. All you have to do is to spread the inks of the water-based markers on the glass mat, spray water, and dab the paper on it. So you will have something super cool and it's a waterproof watercolor piece. So this ink is not going to move anywhere. You can even pass a wet towel on top of it and this is completely permanent. So once you use watercolors on photo paper, this is going to become permanent. You can splatter this with Nubo Aquaflow pens, with the Midas Touch pen, with any other acrylic paint or anything you have and you can die cut the paper to get these beautiful die cuts. So there is so many things you can create with die cuts like this and today I want to share a quick and easy checker card idea with you which is this one here. So that's a super, super simple checker card. So the idea was a kind of creating a scene inside the checker. But of course, this is a very simple one. And from here, you can imagine or you can make different things. So now I'm going to make this card here, which is exactly the same. This is watercolor paper. And I'm just tracing a line just to create a kind of branch 
And then I'm going to use a Nubo brush script pen. I'm going to lay some of the ink here and there over that branch. I trace with the pencil. This is a water-based marker, so when I use an aqua brush over that ink, I kind of spread the ink and I get some darker areas and some lighter areas. So that make kind of a more watercolor effect. And then I can also use the pen directly on the wet paint to get darker areas. So now I'm going to use blue distress ink to add color to the background and I'm going to spray this with water just to create a kind of texture and I'm going to glue down the die cuts. Using the Tim Holtz stamping platform, I'm going to stamp the sentiment several times until I get this very dark and crisp sentiment and the panel has it is measured six by six inches but i decided to die cut it and because at last minute i got the idea to create a kind of frame for that very very simple scene i'm going to use a pre-score six by six car base and i'm going to stick this frame first using foam pads and once i have this done i trim the car base to the size then I'm going to glue this piece here and I'm going to splatter this background with a Nubo Aquaflow pen. I'm going to embellish with Nubo drops and sequins. I also like to use a black micro fine tip pen to add some dots here and there and my card is done. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel or visit my blog for more ideas and inspiration. Thank you very much for watching and happy crafting. Bye!